some staff members and students at the University of Cape Town are objecting to the scheduled address at the institution by Professor Patrick Lumumba. The EFF has invited Prof Lumumba to speak at their 10-year anniversary celebration. In a petition directed at UCT Vice-Chancellor, staff and students have accused Lumumba of being a homophobe who has passed derogatory comments on the African LGBTQIA plus community. Sinawo Tambo speaks for the EFF and he joins us now uh, for more on this. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Um, with this pressure, how does the EFF characterize it? Look, well, as the EFF, we're not feeling any form of pressure. Uh, it's part of public discourse and debate, which is something we hugely encourage. And of course, as the Economic Freedom Fighters, our position regarding the anti-homophobic, the anti-homosexuality bill, rather, in uh, Uganda is well known. We are the only organization that has stood up in the entire, possibly the continent, against that bill. We are the ones who picketed outside of the Ugandan embassy against the bill. So for us, we are not feeling any undue pressure. We are happy that uh, there's a conversation that has been sparked. It's unfortunate that the position by Prof. Lumumba, he took it when he took it, uh, because we didn't plan our event a week before. It's been planned in, uh, for a couple of months. And it's well known, uh, even by him, that we don't agree with that position. But we see it as an opportunity for his views to be changed, for his views to be interacted with, and for them to be changed in a progressive manner, because a scholar of his stature should not be held holding such regressive views. So we're not feeling any pressure. And in fact, we welcome the debate and expect it to be had even on the 10th anniversary public lecture day. You speak on regressive views. Why him? Look, Prof. Lumumba is a renowned Pan-African scholar in the continent. He's a legal expert uh, who is known in Kenya for championing anti-corruption initiatives. And as we know, the African continent has been plagued by corrupt leadership post the liberation moment in many countries. And uh, someone of that caliber is uh, someone that we associate ourselves with in terms of the anti-corruption agenda. Now, for him to hold those views that he holds is unfortunate. He's aware that we disagree with them. And our views, of course, South Africans know them. So there shouldn't be a discourse around the EFF's position around the anti-homosexuality bill in Uganda. It's publicly known. But it's quite concerning, or perhaps more interesting, to note that the person who's actually passing that bill, uh, Museveni, the president of Uganda, was in South Africa just a couple of months earlier, welcomed by the president of South Africa. There was no uproar, there was no statement, there was no petition by anyone. So one should look at uh, much of the hullabaloo in South Africa right now with uh, suspicious eyes because the president of South Africa hosted, shook hands, hugged, engaged with the man who passed this bill, with the man who champions the agenda of the murder or imprisonment for life of people who practice gender sexuality in a different way than that is cisgender normative. So it's quite curious for us as to why the sudden uproar when the EFF invites someone for a specific uh, address of a public lecture regarding our anniversary Someone who did not pass any law of this nature but holds regressive views seem to cause more uproar than our president hosting the man who's passed these hateful laws. So what? What's good for the goose is good for the gander because the Republic of South Africa did that. The EFF can do that too. Not good for the goose and good for the gander, but rather hypocrisy must be exposed. There's a lawmaker that the one who presided over this hateful law was here in this country and there was utter silence. Why is the EFF the one that is expected to disassociate themselves from people who are supporting from a distance regressive laws when our position is well known? Our position as the EFF is well known that we know that gay rights are human rights. Human rights are gay rights. We're against the imprisonment of people because they express themselves differently in terms of their sexuality or gender identity. It's in our founding manifesto. We've practiced it on the picket lines. We've practiced it in our leadership structures. So there is no correlation between what the law, is, the law that has been passed in Uganda and the policies and beliefs of the EFF. What is South Africa's position on the homosexuality bill? It's interesting. We've written this question to the Minister of International Relations, and they have said they've had no diplomatic interaction with Uganda regarding this hateful law that has been passed. But the uproar is around the EFF inviting someone who has at a distance expressed support for this regressive law, while we all know the EFF disagrees with the law itself. So hypocrisy must be exposed when it raises its ugly head. Will it be a safe space for members of the LGBTQIA? Standing in a dignified manner, interrogating those views, interrogating him as a pan-Africanist. What is his understanding of 
the relationship between pan-Africanism and homosexuality in a country where the hate for homosexuals is actually a colonial notion. It's colonialists that brought the ideal that homosexuality is anti-religious or anti-some form of uh, ways of living and normal ways of living. So it's actually ironic that the laws that are being passed supposedly in defense of African hood were actually being brought to be and brought to pass in Uganda by British colonialism. So there needs to be a conversation with pan-Africanists who have a distorted view of sexuality in Africa. And we know that that avenue is going to be conducive to that debate and engagement because that's the character and nature of the EFF. What is the party's position on the continent? Maybe I ask in particular uh, what else is on the agenda when you take a look at a number of things that are happening, the instability in Sudan at the moment, the what is known as the coup belt of West Africa, and so it goes. And so what is the ideal idea of the EFF for this year continent? Look, we believe that the factors in the continent are primarily always sponsored by external forces. And it's an interesting conversation because it has come to light that the Wagner Group, which was waging uh, some form of attempted coup in Russia, has presence in Sudan, has presence in the Congo, has had presence in Zimbabwe, to fuel this instability in order to maximize on mineral access across the continent. So we are of the view that a lot of the instabilities, the coups, the arming of rebel forces and insurgent groups to cause instability in the continent are being sustained and funded by external forces that have an interest in political instability in the continent in order to ensure the ease of access to our mineral wealth without anybody. And that is our understanding of the situation in the continent. So we need a firm, strong and incorruptible leadership in Africa that will not fall into the trap of getting the crumbs of the minerals uh, of, our, of our continent uh, by issuing uh, measures in order to have instability in the continent itself. So our understanding is that the continent is extremely fractured, and that fracture is due to imperialist intervention and meddling in our domestic affairs. Sinao Tambo speaks for the EFF. Thank you very much for your time.